Do you believe that there is such a thing as oral memory? A-U-R-A-L, oral memory, right? Can you remember sound? Now, a lot of people say that there is no such thing as oral memory. I don't know. I, I, I don't accept that, uh, that you can't remember a sound. Of course you can. And here's the easiest example I can provide is the phone rings, pick up the phone, and you hear a voice that says, hello. And you instantly know who it is, right? If it's a, if it's a friend you haven't spoke to in 10 years, 20 years, and they say, hello, you know who it is, right? I do. They didn't say, hi, it's Jack, or, or hello, blah, blah, blah. You know, they didn't give you like a catchphrase that you remember, just a passive voice, hello, you know. So the timbre of that voice is so specific to that person that even over a low fidelity device like a phone, you can tell right away. You're not guessing. Is this a... <clears throat> no, you're saying, Jack, I haven't heard from you in decades. It's fantastic. I'm so glad you called, right? It happened to me recently. Who called me out of the blue? Oh, man, I can't... Re now I can't remember his name, but I remember his voice. But anyway, this friend of mine called me just out of the blue. Oh, Rick. Rick called me, and uh, we spoke, and it was fantastic. And Yeah, so... Uh, and I literally hadn't talked to him in at least 20 years. So, let me put it to you this way. Um, in my day-to-day -day work of an audio reviewer, I listen for sound quality, and I compare things to each other. Now, when I'm doing it, and this has sort of been my technique, and many people's technique for... It's not exclusively mine is I just listen to a recording, a good sounding recording. It's hard to evaluate audio gear with a shitty sounding recording. So I do it with really good sounding recording, and uh, I listen to specific aspects of the recording. First, voice. Do I have a sense of a human body attached to that voice? Do I hear their phrasing, their breath, their dynamics, all of that? And I can, okay, I got that, and then I compare the Q Acoustics Concept 300 against the Harbeth P3 ESR 40th anniversary. I compare those two and I say, well, I haven't actually done that comparison yet, so I can't tell you what it sounds like, but um, that, that's what I would start with. I would listen to the voice quality of the ways I just described. If it's an acoustic bass, well, recorded acoustic bass, do I have a sense of the, the this is a large wooden instrument that's resonating? Do I have that woody tone? Can I hear the pluck? Does it have body? You know, if it's, um, if there's a shaker on the recording, each shake, is it, does it sound like just a tape loop of shake, 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 or is each one its own slightly different thing? Is it in space? Can I hear the individual shakers in the sh can I hear those things? In other words, I'm focusing on specific aspects of the recording. I'm listening to sound stage. Does it have depth? Does it have space? Does it sound flat? Those are the cues, and I compare one amplifier to another, one DAC to another, you know, et cetera, et cetera. That's, that's how it works. And I've listened long enough to have a good sense of oral memory. The other thing, more important is, and this is a hard one to, to pin down, is Am I engaged? Am I having fun more with one speaker amplifier whatever, than another? Am I f tapping my foot? Am I bopping along? Is it is it moving me more than the one more than the other? Harder to because that's that's a time thing that goes on over time. Um, but those are some of the ways I, I do it. That's so oral memory is real. And uh, I forgot, oh, I forgot to mention in the front of this video that I'm going to do a quick music review. And the music review is soul singer extraordinaire and sadly not with us, no longer with us, is Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings. This record, Soul Time, from 2011. Now you can tell from that cover, that, that it really captures Sharon Jones. That is Sharon. And uh, this record, more than her others, I think this may be her best record because it's songs they did live a lot and were never on records, and that's why they made this record. And it has kind of a James Brown funky groove, like funk, gritty, low down <clears throat> kind of sound. It's so good. 
and uh, she's in great form. She could belt it out. She's the real thing. You know, there's so many soul singers, contemporary soul singers. They're not soul singers. They're pop singers doing some version of soul. You know, they're, they're too slick. Nothing slick is ever happening on a, on a Sharon Jones record. Now, I, I went to the Daptone studio in Brooklyn, same borough as I live, and I talked to the engineer who made some of her records, and he told me, first of all, they always record to analog, not because they're making audio file recordings, they just use the sound of analog. But the thing he told me that really stu stuck out, well, a couple of things. A, all of her records are done live in a studio. They don't do overdubs, they don't fix mistakes. She said almost they're all one single take. Now they could have done the take you know, six or seven times, but they pick one whole take. It's not edited, chopped up, pro tool, blah, blah, blah. No, it's what happened in the studio. And I remember saying to the engineer, I wish I could remember his name. I said, so, but she has her band, the Tap Kings, and sometimes there's background singers, and sometimes there's even strings, and he's recording to an analog eight-track machine. So I said, you have more than eight musicians. How do you do that, right? He said, well, I just double up. I double up some of the horns or triple three horns on one mic. You know, there's one mic for all the singers, there's one mic for all the strings, whatever. And he said, and I said, how do you, you get the level? He says, well, they're rehearsing, they're running down the tune, I'm setting the levels, I'm moving the mics a little bit. Ready to go, Sharon? Yeah, let's do a take. Bam, there it is. You know, there's no like tweaking, fussing. No, it's the real deal. That's, that's music. <laughs> that's the way, well, in some idealized form, that's what music should be. It should be a performance first, and then, you know, in the mix and everything tweaked and, 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 and perfected later. But first you get a performance. You don't get little bits and pieces of sound that later on somebody, the band's gone and two months later they make it into a record. Now with Sharon Jones, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. There's your tune. Check it out if you're into Saul R&B. My name's Steve Guttenberg. This is very much the Audiophiliac Daily Show, which comes up seven days a week. And uh, if you like these videos, please <clears throat> hit that like button. I don't know if it's on this side or this side. Anyway, wherever that like button is under the video, please like them, share them, do all that social media stuff. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. If you really like these videos, consider my Patreon page, which is at www p a t r e o n dot com slash audiophiliac thank you so much for watching